Hey everyone, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on sex-linked genes. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Chromosomes on which genes are located can affect the expression of traits. Today we're going to look specifically at genes that are located on the X chromosome and to a smaller extent the Y chromosome. So these are the sex chromosomes. So if we're looking at, first of all, sex determination, we know that the mother can give an X chromosome to her offspring and the father can give either an X or a Y. So really it is whichever gamete the father gives that determines whether or not a child is male or female. So the father gives that X or the Y, therefore 50-50 shot at either one. That's where we get the 50% girl, 50% boy for our offspring over a long period of time. So let's look at some of these genes that can be linked to these sex chromosomes. Now if you notice, the X chromosome is quite a bit larger than the Y chromosome, so it has a lot more genes on it. Uh, in fact, um, the Y chromosome has very few genes that uh, end up making much of a difference in this sex linkage. But most of those sex linked genes found on the X chromosome uh, can actually be pretty serious and they affect males more often than females because males only get that one copy of the X chromosome. So if females are to be affected, they're going to have to inherit two uh, bad copies of the X chromosome. If it's a recessive trait, they have to have both recessive traits on both X chromosomes. But the thing with males is whatever uh, allele is on their X chromosome, that is what's going to be expressed. They have no choice but to express those alleles and those alleles only. Now we're going to look at an example here. Now let's pretend that we have, and we're going to look at color blindness. Um, we have a father up here who's contributing possibly um, uh, an affected X chromosome and a Y chromosome, and the mother that is uh, contributing either an unaffected X or an affected X. What this means is this father up here has color blindness. He's got a recessive C, a lowercase c, on his X chromosome, which means he is colorblind. He can also contribute the Y chromosome. If you look at the mother's gametes, there's a little line underneath that C on the top because that's trying to show us that it's capital C. The C's look very similar, so we want to make sure we can show the difference. So the mother has a capital C um, on one of her X chromosomes, and she has a lowercase c on another. So this is a heterozygous mother who's a carrier for colorblindness. So what happens when we mix them together? Well, we've got a heterozygous daughter right there, so that's not colorblind since that is an X-linked recessive trait. You can have um, a, a male that is completely normal. You can also have a daughter, a female, that is affected right here with two uh, recessive copies of the colorblindness gene on the X chromosome. And you could also have an affected male here, just like his father. So the way for uh, you to get an affected female is the father has to have an affected uh, X chromosome, like you see here with one recessive copy. The mother also has to be a carrier of this as well. So that's the only way you can get a female that is affected by something like colorblindness, an X-linked recessive trait. So let's look at colorblindness in general. So the incidence of it is 8 in every 100 males in the U.S. That's a lot. That's 8%. And then only 5 in 1,000 females. That's much, much smaller. So there's a Punnett score on the bottom left showing um, the, what we saw in the uh, previous slide. And you've got uh, a couple of those tests that people tend to show for uh, testing for colorblindness. If you can see the number in the middle on the one on the right, uh, then you are definitely not red-green colorblind. So it'd be interesting to just to see if you if you do have that affected. So another X-linked trait that we can see here is uh, hemophilia. And this one is where people lack the protein that's needed for blood clotting so they can bleed to death from even minor cuts. This happens in about 1 in 10,000 males in the U.S. and you can assume that it is a lot smaller incidence in females because it is an X-linked trait. So let's look at how that would work. If you have a normal father that is not a hemophiliac, but you have a mother who is a carrier of that recessive hemophiliac gene, take a look at what kind of offspring they could have. They could have a normal daughter, they could have a normal son, they could have a daughter who is a carrier of the hemophiliac gene, or they could have a son that is completely affected. Now, the only way you can have a daughter in this case that is affected in a hemophiliac would be if the father was also affected by hemophilia. He would have to have a recessive copy on his X chromosome. So just to illustrate here, this is usually how these X-linked traits work. You get a recessive copy of something like that that is from the mother, 
um, for the trait, and then the uh, affected individual gets a Y chromosome from the father, so therefore whatever was on that X chromosome is what gets expressed. Another example is Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is the progressive weakening and loss of skeletal muscles, and that happens in about one in every 3,000 males. Again, an X-linked trait. Um, and finally, we talk about male pattern baldness and even female pattern baldness. Uh, one of the two genes has been identified as uh, X-linked in, in baldness, so it affects men way more than it affects women. In fact, it affects four in seven men in the U.S. So four in seven men will become bald at some point and usually progressively over their lifetime. Uh, it does affect females as well, but uh, in, in very, very small numbers. So just to kind of summarize what we looked at here, sex-linked traits are much more common in men because men only inherit one copy uh, of a recessive or dominant allele to show that sex-linked trait. I don't want you to think that all sex-linked disorders follow a recessive pattern. Some of them follow a dominant pattern, just like the autosomes, the non-sex chromosomes. So women would have to inherit uh, two copies of a recessive allele to show a trait or they'd have to inherit um, you know, one dominant and one recessive. But most of these X-linked traits that we look at are recessive, so that's why they are much more prevalent in men than they are in women.